Hello, and welcome to my first ever Blood Angels Tactics video. Now, this video is going to be split into two parts. The first part, I'm going to be running you through my 1850 points Blood Angels list. I've got about, all together in my entire collection, 5,000, 6,000 points of Blood Angels. And, personally, I think this is my strongest list at the 1850 point mark. I've played probably about 8 times with this list, and I've only ever lost one time. And that was a very, very tight match. Um, I pretty much annihilated the guy's army, but he made off with the relic, so I didn't get the win. So this is a what I think is quite a nice list. Anyway, like I say, this video is going to be two parts. The first part, I'm going to be running through every element of the list and what it consists of and what it's equipped with. Then I'm going to cut the video and I'm going to run you through the strategy and role of each one of the elements of the list. So, let's start the first part by just describing what the list consists of. So, as our HQ choice, we have the Sanguinor. No upgrades, just, you know, the demon that is the Sanguinor. As always, I apologise for my poor camera work, guys, but, you know, not the most important thing here. So over to troop choices, we have a 10-man assault squad. And there's a power fist in there. A 10-man tactical squad. We've got a missile launcher and a flamer. The um, the flamer might not be the best upgrade to take. It is free, but I find sometimes it, it, it is worth its weight in gold and it, on the right occasion. Some games it would be useless, but occasionally it will really pay off. And our third troop choice, we have five scouts armed with sniper rifles. So now troops are done. At the back here we have an Aegis defence line with the quad gun upgrade. Our fast attack, we have one Bail Predator and we have heavy bolters on the side and the twin linked assault cannon on top. Our three elite choices. One elite choice, we have two sanguinary priests, one of which has a jump pack. Over here, the other two elite choices, this is a five man assault of Terminator squad. And yes, I am aware these are the old school Terminators. Coincidentally, uh, just a bit of advice, if any of you have these models lying around, just uh, buy some of the bigger bases and stick them on. And uh, I really should invest in buying some of the newer Terminators, they do look cooler, but these are the old school ones. And our last elite choice, this is a Furioso Dreadlord with the uh, Blood Talons, and he's got an underslung melter and an underslung storm bolter. The flame is a good shout, I just didn't have the points in this list. Uh, and then our two heavy support choices. This is a five man devastator squad. Four Laz cannons. I know some of you at this stage are thinking, well, what's he taking that for? They're just going to get taken out, but that will all be explained in the second part of this video. And our, what completes this list is the Storm Raven. No upgrades, just a 200 point version. And in it, I take the Twin Link Multi Melter and the Twin Link Laz Cannon. So, what I'm going to do, there's the list. Like I say, um, personally, I find this list very effective. It wins for me most of the time. I've only ever lost once of it. Um, but now I'm going to cut the video, and in the second part, I'm going to divide it up and show you how each of these units works together the role they fulfill and just how the list what the battle plan is that's going to be the second half the battle plan so I'll see you in a in a jump cut okay guys welcome back I've now rearranged the army and I'm going to go through how certain units need to work together and the overall battle plan so first of all five scouts armed with sniper rifles now the reason these guys are out on their own is because they have to be used differently depending on each battle. Sometimes you need to infiltrate them onto objectives, sometimes you're going to stick them at the back, 
They have 36 inch range on their sniper rifles. They're only 75 points and they're a scoring unit. That's the key to this unit and making them work. They're scoring. So they have 36 inch range. They need fours to hit except for the sergeant needs three. Threes to hit. If they get sixes they get precision shots which is quite useful because occasionally you can pop a sergeant or you know pick out a dude with a special weapon. On six they rend and they always wound on a four so they're quite good at wounding monstrous creatures. But really they're 75 points and their main job is to stay alive. These guys have really good survivability. Not because they're any good but because they're a small crappy unit and people don't want to waste time shooting at them. So they hang around, they've got decent range on their guns. Occasionally they might you know, wound or kill the odd guy, but really they're just there to score. And that's why they're sort of on their own. They, they can outflank, they can infiltrate, they're a versatile unit, they get scout moves. Definitely worth their points, what they can do. Then at the back, this is our big sort of anchor, if you will. And what we normally do is we set up the Aegis defence line. And I know, um, as Blood Angel players, this kind of seems a bit alien, but this is 6th edition. And in 6th edition, we've kind of ended up having to play like this, just because, you know, don't get me wrong, in 5th edition, I would run the Scent of Angels list with all my assault squads and play really ag aggressively, because that's how um, I like to play off Blood Angels. But this is the nature of the, the game we play now. So we have to have this defence line. We use the Priest, and stick him with the Tactical Squad, and the Priest will man the quad gun. We've got the Missile Launcher there. And this will normally camp out on an objective, and they can plug away at the back, hold that objective. And uh, the Devastator squad will set up next to them. You get four LAS cannon shots, and they can just bring down tank after tank. These guys always seem to pay for themselves. Now, I'm sure some of you are thinking, but it's a four-man Devastator squad. You know, they're just going to get picked off. You haven't got any bullet catchers in there. What the hell are you talking about, Warwick? Well, the Priest gives this squad and this squad gives everything in six inches and I sort of cluster them together at the back gives them all feel no pain so what you now have is four devastator squads with a three up armor save a four up cover save and a five up feel no pain and it really does make them very survivable so this is sort of the fire base you know you've got the twin link strength seven shots there you've got the missile launcher shots there you've got the last cannon shots there and this can kick out quite a lot of firepower equally if you're in the defensive you know you've got the bolters to sweep up infantry and this will sort of anchor your army. Now, I'm like a proper Blood Angels player though. I haven't completely given up on the assault. So, what we have is the demon that is the Sanguinor. The absolute monster. I just love him. He's a complete cocky bastard. <laughs> He's great. Uh, the Sanguinor Priest and the Tactical Squad. Now, there's different ways you can use these. Sometimes it's good to sort of keep them at the back in cover and use them as a counter-attacking unit, you know, keep them there till, say, turn two or three, rush up, take out a unit, and then storm forward. Now, the Sanguinor is great, because, for a load of reasons, um, but his main one is he gives everything around him aura of fervor, I think the rule is called. Regardless of what it calls, what it does, regardless of what it's called, it gives everyone an extra attack. So, well, this Assault Squad now get four attacks on the charge. The Priest is also there, giving them Furious Charge, so Strength 5, and also giving them feel no pain. The Sanguinor being near them gives... He can't join the squad because he's not an independent character. But he'll get feel no pain as well. This is a really menacing thing to see moving up the board for your opponent. And uh, he it's won me the game numerous times. Um, some other strategies you can do for the Sanguinor. This isn't really that important. But um, for Warlord traits, a lot of the time they're not useful. One thing you can do is... I think it's personal traits... But there's one you can roll off, and on a four, I think it is, you get a trait where for every character your warlord kills in a challenge, you gain a victory point. So, I know it's a one in six chance, this isn't really that important, but if you roll out the Sanguinor, you know, he's weapon skill eight, he's strength six on the charge, he's got six attacks on the charge, he's crazy, he'll kill any anything in a challenge, pretty much. He does struggle with um, stuff with two up saves, though, sometimes. They really do need to fix that in the uh, in an updated codex. But yeah, that will give you a victory point. I know it's a 1 in 6 chance, but occasionally that can really, really help. Another thing is he has a Sanguinor's Blessing. Uh, the last match I played against Striking Scorpions 82, the, uh, the Sergeant with the Power Fist actually won that, which meant that he was Weapon Skill 5, had 
Um, two attacks, uh, three on the charge, one for being near the Sanguinor. Once so you had five power fist attacks on the charge, because of the Sanguinor's blessing, his weapon skill five is really useful. That power fist has saved my ass so many times. I really cannot recommend that enough. Okay, so that unit, so there's that sort of section holding, there's the scouts doing their own thing, and there's this, these three units. The priests join this squad, the Sanguinor near them moving up the field and assaulting. Then we have the Bale Predator. Now again, kind of like the Scouts, you have to play this kind of... <sighs> depends on the game. Sometimes this can sit back and just kick out a load of shots like a pillbox. Other times you want it right up in the opponent's face. It's a fast vehicle, so you can move it and still fire more weapons than if it was just a regular tank. It's a fast tank. Um, it has Scout moves, so you can really be up in the opponent's face. And uh, that assault cannon is really nasty. It's um, strength six, and it also has the rending rule. It really can be, you know, sh shred down some stuff. Heavy bolters do well as well. This does normally die for me. <laughs> it does normally die early on, but it, it's very good as a distraction. You know, um, it can soak up a relatively amount, good amount of fire, and also it can kick out quite a lot of shots. For me, it does. You know, it fills a role. And then last of all, all of this comes together. I mentioned that this is the list that I used to play Striking Scorpions 82 and I'll be honest, this is a strategy I, I pretty much just ripped off of him with his Blood Angels list. Um, obviously he has a lot more subscribers than me, but uh, if you haven't, you probably have already seen his videos, if you haven't, check him out. He's um, a lot better at this than me. <laughs> but um, yeah, this this really is what's going to win you the game. The Storm Raven's going to zoom onto the onto the field. It's got a twin-linked multi-melter, it's got a twin-linked las cannon, it's got missiles which are strength A AP1 and this is going to come, it's got power of the machine spirit so it can fire at different targets as well um, and it's going to zoom on and blow up the biggest nastiest thing you can see on the field. Then you can get them out on the turn you arrive or if you want this is an assault vehicle so if you keep them in for it, you can't assault on the turn you arrive from reserve but if you keep them in the Storm Raven for a turn, they can come out and assault straight away. You can also assault two targets. And these will come on and cause absolute carnage. They, this is what's won me the game, time and time and time again. And um, the Furioso has the um, Blood Talons, which means he, he's the best pretty much horde killer um, in the Codex. Apart from maybe Death Company of Lamartis, that's open to debate. But uh, for every wound he gets, he also, unsaved wound he gets, he also gets to attack again, and this can go on forever. You know, if he comes up against, say, 30 boys, he will just keep mowing them down until they're all gone. He's a bit of a beast. Then, five assault terminators. I'm aware that guy has a storm bolter and uh, power sword, but he's meant to have a uh, storm shield and uh, thunder hammer. They've got two up, three up on the safe. They've got, um, you know, strength 8 AP2 weapons, and they'll blow up anything. Send them against a vehicle, they'll blow it up. Send them against a heavy entry, they'll blow it up. They, re you know, they're really menacing. So, this is it, yeah? In summary, scouts, small scoring unit to sit on objectives, kick out a few shots. This whole wing is going to sort of anchor your army. You've got a cover save, you've got the priest, you've got anti-flyer there, you've got anti-tank there, you've got anti-infantry there that's going to sort of anchor your army, you're normally going to sit on objective as well you've got the priest with his assault squad the sanguinor moving up with them they're going to move up, they're going to get into the assault and they're going to tear shit up <laughs> I apologise for my language that offended anyone uh, I don't think it would have but you never know uh, and then you have the bale predator, it's a distraction most of the time it will zoom up, it will kick out a lot of shots it can be pretty effective and then last of all you have the Storm Raven zooming on blowing stuff up taking out tanks and then the Furioso and the Assault Terminators coming on to mop up the last of the enemy resistance so there's my 1850 point Blood Angels list um, I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you find it useful at some level. So let me know what you think of this list, is it any good? Am I talking absolute rubbish? <laughs> Am I just an arsehole? Let me know. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video please leave a like, 
if you haven't enjoyed this video and you've left a dislike, uh, as I always say, that that's totally fine. But please comment below and let me know why you left a dislike so I can try and improve. And yeah, uh, if you want to see more Blood Angels tactical videos, more Imperial Guard tactical videos, battle reports, please hit the subscribe button. I hope you all have a cracking day. See you later.